Hello guys, my name is Uchi Kurei from Solitaire Spade Science, and I, and this, this is going to be the first episode of our, uh, of our Modern Physics, uh, video series. So, um, in this episode we're going to be talking about, uh, Richard Feynman and his, um, diagrams named after him, Feynman diagrams, and, uh, we might get a little bit uh, more uh, complicated. It, it, this, never mind. Okay. Um. So, the first thing that you need to know is that Feynman was a physicist. Actually, screw that. Let's just jump right into the uh, the business. Okay. So Feynman diagrams. You might or might not. You may or may not have seen them before. Sorry if my writing is a little bit slower today. Um, I'm using a mouse instead of my regular. Um, pad, tablet. All right, so you may have seen, you may or may not have seen a diagram that looks roughly like that, not roughly like that, right? And uh, now I'm going to describe this. I'm going to tell you what's what's up with this. Okay, so let's say that we have an electron. And a proton right here. And this is also a proton. And this is also an electron. Okay? And you guys know that opposites attract, right? We have an electron and a proton. But look, over here, they're repelling. Well, that's just because quantum mechanics uh, isn't really clear on the uh, direction, position, you know, velocity. You know, quantum in quantum mechanics is a little bit fuzzy. So this basic interaction applies for all things. Um, so yeah. So you may or may not have seen this diagram before. This does describe electromagnetism. The interactions between a negatively charged electron and a positively charged proton. And this Y, this Y is supposed to stand for a photon. This is a photon. So, have you ever wondered how uh, electrons and protons, um, you know, uh, you know, attract each other over, you know, no, there, there, there's nothing in between them. How can they be attracting each other? Well, this is how. They're actually passing photons in between each other. Uh, th these are photons of uh, light. They are what's called uh, virtual photons. Let me write that down. Actually, I'm going to start using different colors. Let's write this down in... Uh, what's a good color? That's not a good color. Hold on. I'm going to a hard time. Okay. Um... Traces. Uh, okay, so these are what's called virtual photons. And for those of you who don't know what a photon is, a photon is a particle of light. Okay. Photon, not photo. Photon, which is where photo comes from. And whenever you hear photo, they're talking about light, uh, visual things. Okay, so a virtual photon is not a photon of light. It is, it, 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 in a sense, it doesn't really exist, but it does. There are a lot of these virtual particles, and they are called uh, bosons. Actually, yeah, okay. So this is Y. We're just going to do all the bosons in green, okay? Oh, in this wavy line, that's how you tell the difference between a fermion and a boson. And if you don't know what these are, um, if my if my uh, quantum mechanics videos are up yet, then go watch those. If they're not, then I'll actually I'll just tell you right now. Bosons are basically uh, force carriers for a particle. So, like a photon uh, carries the electromagnetic force. Um, 
uh, W positive, W my, um, negative, and uh, Z neutral, uh, they all mediate the um, there's no, this is S. They all mediate the uh, um, the weak nuclear force, uh, gluon strong nuclear force, and then the graviton still not uh, detected. The graviton uh, mediates the gravitational force, which we still not, which we still do not understand on a quantum mechanical whole level. And hopefully we'll do a video on that later. Boson. So. And bosons are virtual particles. They don't really exist, but um, I mean they do for a brief moment, and then they. Okay, so what's happening is, well, here, um, nothing's happening. They're just passing a quick fo um, photon, but there are cases where the uh, where, where we can have a or we can have a diagram where there's an electron and a positron colliding like this let me just go back to my green and then they are able to split off so, so they're colliding and they're both turning themselves into a virtual photon and then they split off that can also happen. Um, yeah. So that's kind of they. So virtual particles aren't really there. Um, now let's talk about the symmetry of this because this is one of my favorite things. This is how you actually like solve for these. We're going to be doing an example uh, for the weak force and how you never really, unless you memorize it, you don't really know. Unless you know the symmetry rules, okay? So there are so you can draw certain lines, li uh, lines of symmetry, okay? So let's say that this is going to be our axis of symmetry, okay? And so basically, you can add the charges here, which is a negative two, right? Because uh, electrons have negative one charge, you add them together, it's negative two. And over here we have two. We have two protons. It's going to be a two. It's going to have a charge of two. These two should annihilate each other. If you take the positive, subtract the negative, then you should get zero. Or alternatively, if you draw an axis over here, um, horizontally, then you should be able to. Uh, these two should annihilate each other. One negative one and positive one should annihilate, and these two should annihilate, and it should still equal zero. So, no matter what you look at, if you look at the symmetries, they should always equal zero. If they do not, then this interaction is impossible. It cannot exist. Okay? Um, that's just uh, conservation of charge. And, you know, um, all the conservation rules apply here. Um, conservation of mass, it mass is conserved. Obviously, we have two. Uh, okay. Um. Well, across uh, the horizontal, mass is conserved. Um. So as long as it uh, so, uh as long as the uh, the laws are conserved uh, through one of the um uh, axes, one of the axes of symmetry, then it should be fine. You should be fine. This uh, is possible. But uh, another conservation law that people often overlook is the conservation of probability. Okay, so each of these electrons and these protons have certain wave functions. Uh, you can double the wave function, double the wave function over here, and then they should cancel out. And this and this greatly reduces the amount of interactions you can do, or you can have for a certain particles. Um, but the wave functions need to be able to cancel each other out. Uh, still equals zero. And that is the conservation of uh, probability. That's something that's overlooked quite a lot. 
All right, so now let's just do a quick example. Uh, no. Let's just do a quick example for uh, the... Sorry, guys, I just had to cut there for a second. Um, so, let's assume that we have, back to the uh, weak nuclear force in Feynman diagrams, we have a neutron, okay, and then we can, and as all of you uh, probably know, uh, it's a neutron is made of, up of these things called quarks, is made up of two down quarks and one up quark, and it's like, that would seem like it would have a negative charge rather than a neutral charge, which gives it its name neutron, but these down uh, quarks only have a negative one half charge, and this up quark has a two charge, or not, or two thirds. These, I meant to say one third, these both have one third, you add them together, you get uh, negative two thirds, it's negative, negative two thirds, and then you get the two thirds, and they cancel out, okay? So that's why. Down quarks have a smaller charge, obviously. But, um,. Okay, so we can draw... Actually, let's do this in a different order. So, I'm, I'm, if I'm being super uh, condescending here, I just want to get this... I want to do this the best way possible. Uh, make it less confusing for you guys. So, let's put the U right here, the up cork, and then the down cork. That looks like a DVD. But the down cork, up and down. Okay, so we're going to drag these over. Oh, and I forgot to mention last time that this is time. We're graphing this as the axis for time. And then this way is distance. Uh, which is uh, donated uh, the... Uh, it's represented by R. Okay, so then we can... Well, this isn't really time. Um, usually it is. Okay, so... They, okay, let's ignore these axes, axes, right now, okay? They don't mean anything. They don't mean anything, okay? So we have two, um, D, U, okay? We have a down quark and an up quark, and then they go over, and they continue as they otherwise would, but the down but the second down quark can do something interesting. It can give off a... Oh, the squiggly line is a boson. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but it is. Uh, it can give off a W negative charge boson. <coughs> so it gives up some of its negative charge, and it can... Um, and it uh, turns this down quark into an up quark, and for those of you who know your baryons, which is what a neutron is, a baryon, then you know that uh, one down quark and two up quarks, well you can add the charges, and that makes a um, proton. So this ends up being a proton. This is an up quark. This is an up quark, and this is a down quark. Do the math. If you take the two uh, up quarks, both have two thirds uh, charge, then you get four thirds, and then you have to subtract the one third from the negative. This is negative. This is a down, not p. And then you take all of these together. This is a proton. So through this interaction, the neutron actually becomes a proton. It completely changes its, um, you know, what particle it is. But, you know, it has to get rid of something. This W boson is a virtual particle, of course, and it can't just stay there. So, what do we do? It gives off radiation. That's why the weak force is... I don't want black. That's why the weak force is the force responsible for, uh, radioactive decay, uh, radiation. Uh, you know, all this stuff. Okay, we're going to do the... Okay, so this has a negative charge, negative one. So we can... Um, so it would emit an electron, and... Uh, 
an electron neutrino. You don't need this thing here, by the way. I just wanted to put it there. Okay. So, and the V is a neutrino. So, this is a... So, through this process, if a neutron emits a... a, a Bo uh, bo um, a W minus boson, which in itself uh, splits into an electron and an electron neutrino, then it can give birth to a proton. Uh, another, it can change this down quark into an up quark, which would make a proton. Okay, um, we might do examples of this later. I might do more examples because uh, Feynman diagrams are very important in physics. Um, my name is Uchiguro, right? And I am signing off now.